Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Kopi and Tech. Today we're going to have an overview of Gigabyte's X670E Aorus Master motherboard for the Ryzen 7000 series. And we will also provide the benchmark results for the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9. This is the 7900X, not the 7950. Uh, we, don't, we don't have it in hand at the moment, so too bad. So anyway, for our benchmark build, um, we will be featuring the Gigabyte Aorus DDR5, DDR5 RAMs. Uh, they are 5002, two pieces of 16 gigs. They're running at CL40. Uh, before we go on to the benchmarks, let me just introduce the motherboard a little bit. This is an ATX sized X series motherboard for the AM5. The feature for this board is well, it's a DDR5 board, uh, as with all AM5 boards. It has a DDR5, a, DDR5, a PCIe 5, Gen 5, X16 for GPU. Two M.2 PCIe 5s, two M.2 PCIe 4s. Uh, the remaining two PCIe slots are PCIe 4s and PCIe 3. And a bit overkill here, it actually has 10 fan haters. VRM wise, uh, it's a twin 8 plus 8 for the V core, so it's a 16 plus 2 plus 2 at a 105M power stage setting. Besides that, for the I.O., it features 10 USB ports, 4 3.2s, 4 3.0s, 2 2.0s. As for USB-C, there are two. One comes with the 20 gig transfer speed, and the other one's a 10 gig. But the 10 gig features a DP functionality, which is pretty similar to the Vision Link in the Arrow boards. Uh, so I believe you can actually connect to your Wacom Cintiq Pro to it, but otherwise the Aorus is actually much more for gamers rather than content creators. Um, besides that, as you can see here, it's fully shielded with heat sinks everywhere, including the back as well. And that's about it. So what do we have here? We have a Ryzen 7, 770 Zero X and the 7900X. So let's head off to the benchmark. As you can see from the benchmark, the X670E Aorus Master can fulfill all your requirements for gaming, overclocking. Okay, like we didn't show the overclocking scores, but it, it's more than capable of, come on, 16 plus 2 plus 2 VRM. Do you have more than enough power supply for it, uh, power stability for it? The productivity wise, it's good. But bear in mind, the Ryzen 7 is a little bit iffy. When we ran it out of the box, as per expected, it actually hit 95.5 degrees Celsius, which is so-called the norm for the, for the 7000 series. But we felt like the performance wasn't up to expectations. So what we did was, we went to the BIOS, we undervolted to 1.2 volts, we knocked the temperature to 85 degrees Celsius, and this thing just fly. It just flew off the charts. Okay, it, it performed 5.5 gigs on all cores simultaneously on Cinebench R23 multi-core benchmark. It's crazy, okay? So if you're getting this chip, I highly recommend that upon installation, install hardware monitor, install Cinebench R23, give it a go, and if it actually hits 95.5 or 95 degrees even, Go back into your BIOS, do some tweaking, do some tuning, and run the benchmark again. 
you'll be surprised you know, on how, how much better it performs. Okay. On another note, if your budget does not, does not permit you to go into the X670, or you just want to run a Ryzen 5 with uh, a motherboard which uh, have overclocking capabilities, we have all this here, the B boards, uh, which will fit in the purposes. All right, if you want a a B board level of uh, enthusiast board with uh, overclocking capabilities, you want it to have uh, great gaming capabilities, the B650E Aorus Master. Content creators, the ROG. For the rest who are on low, lower budget, but you just want it for gaming purposes, this still fits your bill. So it depends whether if you want to run on a bigger casing, you have a full ATX board, or the M, M boards here. And that's it for today. Thank you.